Are you married or in a committed relationship looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship? You are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hello, and welcome to The Couples Expert podcast. This is Stuart Fensterheim, The Couples Expert. I am sitting here in my office just reflecting on the fact that Thanksgiving is just around the corner. I really can't believe that. This year has just flown by like a bat out of hell. But it's been an interesting year for this couple's counselor, being that I experienced the loss of my father this year. My dad passed away on November 27th, 2017. Dr. Alvin Fensterheim. Some of you may be aware of that, but what I want to talk about today has to do more with father-son relationships than the grief of losing my dad. Although it's been an excruciating, painful year in so many ways, but one of the things that I feel incredibly fortunate about was that I was born into a family of the Jewish faith. The reason that that feels very wonderful is one of the things about Judaism that I really appreciate is that they really know how to deal with the different life cycles. And one of the things some of you may be aware of, that when we lose a parent in the Jewish religion, we go through what's called sitting shiva, Sitting Shiva is a year-long celebration, really, of the person's life that you lost. But more importantly, it's a time of reflection, and it's a time to really get in touch with all the emotional feelings that you have for your parent. And one of the things that I talk a lot about with couples is the concept of being authentic and vulnerable with that person in your life that loves you more than anyone else. And what I want to share with you is the relationship between a father and son has to have those elements too. And through this year of Shiva, through the time where you reflect on your life with that person that you lost, that just passed away, and you really go through a very authentic, vulnerable experience with yourself. And the hope is what you do is that you're able to really get together and understand the meaning that that person has had for you. And that's really what I've done. And uh, last week, I actually went to New York City, which is where my father is buried, and we did what's called an unveiling. An unveiling is where you go and you celebrate that year-long shiver and the ending of it. And what you do is this is when the tombstone is placed on the grave, and generally the entire family comes, uh, more the immediate family, and you share what this past year has meant to you. And some people speak out at the, at the gravesite, others when you go out to, and one of the things about Jewish religion is food is an important part of that. So we all went to, and those of you who have the Jewish faith who are listening will know the significance of this, but we went to a Chinese restaurant, which is one of the most favorite things that my father loved to do. And we all shared our thoughts and our memories. And my brother, who's the executive of the will, spoke a little bit about some of the things that, that he has learned about my father's life from do, taking care of some of his assets. My father was a well-to-do man. And one of the things that we all understand is my father went through three different stages of his life. He wasn't always an easy person to relate to. And all of us, and as his sons, and there are five sons and one daughter, really were able to share a bit about 
the meaning that he had to each one of us. And the unveiling is when you really begin to really understand what his life meant to me. And I was quite emotional during this time because when I have reflected back on my life with my father, Alvin, I have tremendous joys, I have tremendous sorrows, and I have deep regrets. One of the biggest regrets I have is that it was only since the latter years of his life that he and I developed this incredibly close relationship in which I was able to have such an authentic, wonderful relationship with him where I could talk about the things that matter to me and he could do the same. And one of the things that occurred is that about 10 years ago, he had quadruple bypass surgery. And that was really the time where he and I really had some heart-to-heart -heart talks about things that happened to us in his 90 years. He was 80 at the time. It really is a wonderful experience that I was able to go through this time with him and develop this relationship through the last years of his life. And in, it is in his memory that I am dedicating this podcast. And I'm very nervous about it, to be honest. What I'm nervous about is I want this podcast to be able to represent his passion, his dedication of living a life in you, each of your families. And he gave back to the community in such a wonderful way. But more importantly, he talked about his dedication, his passion for every single human being to recognize that love is the absolute most important thing that you can share with your family, and most importantly, in father-son relationships. And there are a number of his children who have sons. I do not, I have two daughters. But my relationship with my father, Alvin, was a special one. It was one in which we would sometimes have drag out fights through the years, talking about the differences that his life was and mine life was, and particularly in terms of our religious faith. He was a very devout, orthodox man. And through this year of Shiva, one of the struggles that I have found, and one of the wonders for me, has been a newfound connection with my religious faith. And the sorrow this year, for me, has been to not be able to share that with him, with his alongside of me in shul, in the synagogue. And knowing that he would be so happy and so proud of my growth and my ability to really be a couples counselor that is dedicated to the passion of helping couples develop these kinds of relationships, a relationship that makes every single human being important in their life. And this podcast, and one of the things I wanna talk about is really about how to make the father-son relationship be that relationship that helps the future generations really understand the commitment that you must have, the dedication that each one of you have to have to teach your son about being a man in the truest sense of the word. And being a man does not mean 
not expressing feelings or being open to feedback or really being one of those men that have an equal relationship with your partner and demonstrating every day of your life that your wife is the most important person in the world to you. This demonstration to your children, to the world, that your love for your partner is based on an equal relationship, a relationship in which you have your wife or partner feeling that they are the best thing that ever happened to you. And you do that by demonstrating that in action and in words. And that the relationship with your son is one in which your value and you role model for them exactly how you would like them to treat their wives, their family, their job, all the things that make you a man who's done the work to make sure that your partner knows what's in your heart. So let's talk some more about having that relationship. So to be clear about this, what happens is that when we are the, the male head of the household, the father, our sons really learn about being man primarily by watching how you and your wife interact. When there is emotional abuse or critical comments or demeaning statements made to the woman in the home, they believe that being a man would be doing that as well. And what I always like to tell folks is that the role model that you and your partner demonstrate about how to have a relationship will more often than not have your son, your daughter, having similar relationships. You know, we all have gotten to a place where we've said, I'm not going to be like my father or my mother or their marriage. And years go by, and what we recognize quite often is that no matter what we wish for, we tend to emulate them. So if you're going to be that person in your son's life, who's going to have them be the kind of man you want them to be, which is a caring, loving, giving individual who's generous, you have to be that person for them, for your family. And when it comes time for Christmas, if you end up making it more important that the Christmas or Hanukkah season is about gifts and not about giving back to the community and helping those more needy than you are, then your children will emulate that. So being a father to a son means that you walk the walk, not just talk the talk. That you demonstrate to your son every day of their life how a woman should be treated. And that doesn't mean we need to put them on a pedestal. That means what we need to do is demonstrate every single day that love is the pathway to having a good life and that money is less important than feelings and that no matter what you do, you're sensitive to your partner's feelings and making sure that they feel loved every day of their life with you. And that conflict isn't about, I'm sorry, it just came out. But conflict is about working through the issues in a kind, generous way that has both people feeling valued. And that being a father in a family is about making sure that your partner knows how important they are. It's true. You don't have to give up on your relationship 
or settle for feeling lost or as if something is missing. You just need to know how to connect with your partner in a way that allows the two of you to feel loved and appreciated. But the problem is that many couples don't have the tools they need to navigate the ups and downs of a relationship without causing relationship injuries to one another. Yet they wonder what happened to the friendship. The friendship that you used to share. How did it get from where it was in the beginning of the relationship to where you are now, feeling alone, disappointed, and hurt? And yet, you just can't seem to move forward to be happy again. Thankfully, this problem can be fixed. And that's where the two days and seven conversation hold me tight workshop comes in. Just two days, you will understand what you and your partner need to have a relationship where both of you are on the same page, working together to have that close relationship you only once dreamed of. Check it out at www.thecouplesexperts.com. Your relationship deserves the two of you feeling that closeness you once had. The other thing about being in a relationship that you want to strengthen is having shared interests. One of the things that my dad used to do and did so well was he developed an interest in computers. As a 90-year-old man, there is not many people I know at that age that it was so invested in, in computers. He was a day trader. And when he retired as a dentist, he was a dentist for many, many years. And one of the really sad things that came up as he was retiring, I recall a, a time that I was visiting him in New York City, which is where he lived. And we had lunch right around the time that he was ready to give up his dental practice. And we talked about it. And one of the things he shared with me was that his love for dentistry died years and years and years ago. That what he loved is the business part of it, but he didn't like the clinical work so much. And I thought about that. It was really sad. One of the reasons he shared that with me was to tell me that you should never do anything in your life that you didn't enjoy. That trying new things being a counselor, being a construction worker, being a dentist, being a doctor, that's just a job. It doesn't define you. And if you don't love what you do, find something you do love. As soon as you wake up and you hate going to work on a regular basis, you need to do something different. There isn't one pathway to your happiness Years ago, many people had one job and that's what they did. And, and his experience was he didn't really have many choices growing up, that he had to do something like a dentist or a doctor, and that he didn't really like it as much. He loved the business aspects. He loved developing programs and uh, having a group practice. And he loved those aspects. But the truth is, he didn't really love what he was doing, but he didn't see much choice. So he wanted to make sure that whatever I did, it was something that really made me feel excited about getting up and going to work. Otherwise, don't do it. He's not saying quit your job. He's saying find something you love and make that work. And that really was a message. And those conversations that we had were so wonderful. And it reminded me this past year, thinking of back, what else did he do to really connect with me? There were many things he would try that didn't always work so well. I remember one of the downsides of conversations with him quite often, and this was years and years and years ago, where he would say, I want you to talk to me. So talk to me. And he'd sit there quietly and he wouldn't participate in the conversation. And it felt so awkward and so 
just really, really bad. It felt one-sided. As the years went on, that changed. He really became passionate about interacting with me on a different way. And one of the memories that I have of when he did that when we were little is he was looking for things that would have common interest. And I remember we used to, in New York, go to these clubs that had, that had toy cars, electric cars, that would run really fast around, around a track. They were almost remote control cars. And whenever we would come visit, we would drive about an hour to go there. Now think about that. Taking that time, putting that energy, and he would put aside the time where we would just do those things just to develop those interests. And as the years went on, it became computers. It became Mac versus PC. It became how do you put three or four monitors together so that you can see the stock market all across his, his screens. And you'd walk into his house, and it'd be so wonderful to see that there. And we would talk about it, and we would share it, and he would really get excited, and he'd call us up. And one of the things he never really got to very well was, was his phone. We had gotten him a Samsung phone, and he never really quite figured out how to use it. And he'd call me up or my kids up, and he'd interact. And those kinds of things that he would do to really send the message of how important the relationship was to him, just really became a love of mine to really think about my dad and wanting to really have interests that we could share. Now, one of the things that is an essential thing, and I see so many people dropping the ball with their father-son relationships, and sometimes people go, too far with it, is getting involved with father-son activities, coaching your child on a soccer team or coaching their baseball team, but coaching in a way that isn't about pushing your child beyond their limits, that this is about having fun with it. This is about the two of you sharing an experience, being able to go to an Arizona Cardinal game and loving the Cardinals together and talking about the players or you going and throwing the football with your son or going to the batting cages or doing those kinds of activities that are more important than you sitting at home and doing paperwork from your job. That there are going to be absolute unique times where you clock out from work and it's about your dedication to your wife, to your family, and to your son of showing them part of what a man's about is not just making money, but sharing the love that you have for your family, for your life, for each other, and verbally telling your son and telling your dad how much you love them. And that the negativity that sometimes gets discussed about grandparents needs to be off limits. You need to be able to stand up to some of those kind of comments that sometimes gets made and says, that's not okay. Think about grandpa, think about his feelings. Because so often, just like there are phases in our lives with our parents, grandparents also have phases. And you as the role model, need to demonstrate to your children when it's a laughing joke and when is it that you never talk negatively about someone who cares about you and is part of your family and that you are a role model in all ways, both with regards to your wife, with regards to your family and your parents and the uncles and aunts and that you never accept people putting people down and making it a joking, laughing matter when someone's feelings may be hurt. You do have a responsibility to your son to demonstrate 
how a man acts and behaves. The other thing that's really wonderful to do is building projects and coming up with projects together, doing something magical. One of the things that I recall is these model airplanes that my dad and I used to do. And we used to build these. And we used to really put together things that allowed us to share an experience and see a project from beginning, middle to end. It was fun. Uh, one of the things that I recall when we used to go to New York, we would buy these water rockets. You filled it up with water and you pumped it up, and then you shot the rocket into the air. I haven't seen many of those around lately, but we used to do things like that. That was so wonderful. It was wonderful to be able to look forward to doing something different than I would do with my mom. My parents were divorced. So we'd sometimes go back and forth. Obviously, we'd come visit him on the summers, and we lived with our mom other times. So when we would go, it, it became sort of this unique experience. It wasn't always tremendously fun. Sometimes there were some stresses with this. But for the most part, I knew he wanted to spend time with me. And it was a wonderful kind of experience. And one of the things that through the years was a bit of a challenge for my dad and I was an experience of feeling like I got listened to, that he cared about how I felt and what I thought. That was one of the biggest changes that happened over the years. But one of the message and learning from that is as a father, you want to demonstrate to your son that no matter what their age is, you care about what they think. You care about what they feel. It isn't that children are to be seen and not heard. It's I want to know how you feel about this. That doesn't mean that the decision is your child's or is your son's, but that you send a message every single day of your life together that they matter and their feelings about something matter. And that parenting isn't about unilateral being a, a monarch or a dictator. It's about making sure that the decisions that you make are with the kid's best interest at heart and you care about how they feel about it. That doesn't mean that you aren't going to do things that they may not like because it is your home and you do get to decide the rules. But for the most part, it's because of you care about them, not just because you get to decide because you're the boss. As fathers, we need to focus on the positives with our sons. There is so much negativity that is bombarded and messages all around them. Our political system these days is strictly, it feels, on a negative slant, and not talking about the things that are important in this world. Watching commercials will give you a great sense of inadequacy unless we're this really big football player or we score touchdowns. There's a message that says that you're not a good son, that if you don't have the ability to make a touchdown and say in the Super Bowl, thanks, Mom, that we're less than. If we're someone who is interested in the creative arts, for example, that that makes you less of a man. It's horrible. Our job as fathers is to tell our sons that they can be whoever they want to be. And whether or not they fit a mold is less important than the kind of person that they are. That we communicate our approval of them regardless of their sexual orientation. That we send a message. I've recently had a couple of people in my practice that I've talked to that had such horrible experiences coming out as a gay man or a gay woman. Our jobs as parents, our jobs as fathers, is to let our kids know that who they are as an individual is just perfect for us. And who they are is someone that we love, care about, and know that they are the best people that we know. And not only do we love them, but we like our sons. 
turning to a child, a son, or turning to a father and saying, you know what, if I had to pick someone to be my son, it would be you, is such a wonderful thing. One of the positives when I've talked with people who have been adopted, who sometimes struggle with, was I thrown away? I say, but what's the relationship with your adopted parents like? And for some, a very, very, very positive. And I said, just imagine something. Someone chose you. You were special in that way. The TV show This Is Us is a perfect example of that. And imagine turning to your father as a child, as a son, and turning to your son as a father and saying, I'm sure glad God picked us to be together. How wonderful that is. That ability to really feel fortunate that this world brought the two of you together. That's really what my life with my father has led me to feel. It's so fortunate that God put me in this family with this man. I didn't always feel that way. But life is long. And we change our paths. We change the path of being with our family. And uh, I've, I've talked about this before, but just as a just a brief moment, doesn't really quite fit in this podcast. But don't forget that life is long. And I see so many fathers and sons and families who tear apart, don't speak for years, sometimes not for their entire life until someone's passing away, and even then doesn't connect. How sad that is. And what a toll that takes. And what is that message to your children when that happens? I would hope as a father and a son with that value, making value in that relationship, that that experience never happens to either one of you. Because you've worked hard throughout the years, regardless of the strife that sometimes may occur between fathers and sons, there's an overshadowing experience. And one of the things my father did so well was the experience that we had as a family is no matter what feelings that sometimes an anger and despair and disagreement and difference we had, we're one family and nothing will overshadow that. And your role as a father teaching your son is family is king, not one individual. And the two of you together as a father and son relationship will always establish a foundation of that that says no chance, no time in your life together do the past not break, do the two of you not make the most important thing is both people feeling loved and important and every conversation that you have with your father or as your son should end with we're lucky to have one another, and I love you. And don't forget that. And those messages echoing back for years and years and years makes your relationship pretty powerful and pretty important. The last thing I want to talk about having to do with the father and son relationship I, I touched on earlier in the podcast, which is the spiritual part. Through the years, fathers and children aren't always lined up spiritually. There are differences in our spiritual upbringing, and sometimes there's a rejection through the years of the religious beliefs that the family may have raised the child in. I want acceptance for difference, even spiritually, to be there. I think religion has a lot to offer people. It has offered people solace. 
It offers people the ability to have a conversation of what's right and wrong, to teach values. But most importantly, what I hope for every single individual is that your religion is one that teaches loving your parents, loving your children, being respectful is the most important value. And that being right is less important than loving. So I hope all of you take this to heart. And I hope that we all understand how important these relationships are. And that you and your son and you and your father make the most important thing how close you could feel about one another. And if there is a challenge with these things, that you're willing to have a dialogue that says, I want our relationship to be better. And I'm willing to do whatever it might take to improve our father and son relationship and make both of us know how much we're loved, how much we care about one another, and that nothing is more important than that and that acceptance of our relationship being the foundation of our family and our future families really is what matters. And that the other part of this is, and what I see sometimes as a really sad thing, is when the couple's relationship becomes a challenge and impacts the parent-child relationship. It's actually a podcast that I think I would like to do soon, but I want to make sure that everyone recognizes that the father-son relationship is one of the most important relationships, and a good father-son relationship leads to a good relationship with a spouse. So think about that. Be good to each other. Be good to your parents love one another, and next week in Thanksgiving, please say a special prayer for all the relationships in the family and be thankful for the ones that are working and dedicated to the ones that are challenges that you're going to improve the relationship this next year. Take care and please stay connected. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 